Hey, what's up? Uh, so for the router, I was using the SCOA router, but I found something that uh, makes things a lot easier, and uh, it gives us a lot of power for uh, functions and validation. So and it makes the code really um, look good. So it's called routing controllers, and this is for TypeScript, and it uses decorators. And you can use this for Kua and Express, which is nice. So basically, let me just show you um, how the con how co a controller would look like and what it is. So basically, you define a class and put this decorator on top of it. And now, for each function, you will decorate it with something, and that function will be triggered when they when an HTTP request hits this route. You def you give it here, uh, and this is basically it. So this is what controllers are. It's a better way than defining an array of functions or array of middlewares and passing them to Core or Express. Uh, and we are using TypeScript so we can u make use of these controllers. Which, um, it's nice. So at some point we will get, we will put like uh, at authorized. So this route won't activate unless the user has a valid JSON or token. So it's really nice. And to get start with this, you need to go to installation. You need to install the routing controllers, uh, reflect metadata. We already installed that for type of RM, but maybe I didn't show you uh, where to import it. You can import it anywhere, basically, but maybe I didn't record myself uh, importing that. Um, you need to install also the class transformer and the class validator. This package uses these, and it uses them to validate, the, I think, the body of the request. We can do that at some point, but uh, we need to install them now, right now. And we need to do this in the TS config. We already did this uh, just to enable, just to allow the TS, con TS compiler, or not to allow it, to stop it from complaining. Uh, because it will complain that these are experimental. And we are telling it just, yeah, let me al allow me to use it. Don't complain. That's, that's basically what this means. So to start, let me go one second. I guess we get this here. We need to install. So npm install uh, routing routing controllers. And I think I didn't show you, but we need to install the Kua uh, body parser. This parses uh, the body, and I think the response as well, and convert them to JSON. So you need to install these two as a dependencies, and as a dev dependency, we need to install npm install uh, add types the Kua body parser and give it a flag dash d. So this is the type for the core body parser, obviously, but the routing controller don't need types, they come with types. That's what I understood. Uh, that's why some packages you install it with types, some packages you don't. Uh, usually the packages you don't install them with types, usually, not always, uh, they already built with TypeScript. Okay, now the thing is here. So I think one thing to correct here inside our index, you can import the reflect metadata here because also type or m requires that so that's in the in the repo you will find this imported here but you can import it anywhere you can import it actually here so this is just need to be imported pretty sure there is a function here that will execute and do something uh, to a specific prototype or a specific uh, yeah to a specific prototype I'm pretty sure this is or at least get add some functions to uh, globally something like this that's why you just import it uh, here. Like this colors. When we import it, just imported that file. Now all our strings have these properties inside of their prototype. Pretty sure this does uh, the same thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's now start. So I will create a folder called controllers. And inside of it, I will create a folder called users.controller.ts. And I'll just make things fast because I think this is um, uh, easier to insert by looking at the code instead of uh, talking. 
so I will import the cont these are these things from the routing controllers these all are called decorators basically decorators are functions and when you call them they will get like uh, let me just show an example so this is a control uh, a decorator called controller which is a function when you call it like this and invoke it put add then invoke it all of this will be the argument for this function so it's like passing a class to this function but like the syntax is very different I think this is inspired by, from Java and if you know Spring uh, this is this would look very similar I can't confirm that this is inspired but I, I'm pretty sure uh, at least maybe Spring and Java has something to do with this it's really nice anyway so when we import these two creators I will start by exporting class called users controller I like to make them proler I think it makes more sense than just user it manages all users I, um, that's just me so I'll define I will decorate this with the controller and if you pass something here like this for slash users all of these routes defined inside this class will be prefixed with for slash users for, so if we have a fun uh, uh, a method here that wants an ID like this so it accepts an ID in the URL this will automatically be prefixed like this I think yeah it, it will make sense in a, in a moment so now I will get a function and decorate it with the git uh, to create it I'll call it git all this uh, return all this will return all the users we will do this in a moment or maybe in a couple of videos but when we decorate this function with the get decorator this means the HTTP request to trigger this method or, or function I think it's people usually uh, discuss what we should care uh, what, what we should call uh, functions when you put them inside the classes in JavaScript some people say we should call them functions some people say we, we should call them method uh, I'm, I'm really not sure because yeah anyway it's, it's, it's not relevant but when we decorate this uh, I'll just call the method when we decorate this method uh, in this class with get this means it will be triggered on a get request on specifically HTTP get request uh, and it, this route will be like this for slash users uh, localhost 3000 for slash users this is the route for this one now if you want to get a specific user we usually pass the ID in the URL get like this hold on one second everything froze oh. okay uh, this is get one and usually you would pass an ID here but to get it we will define it will we define it first at the route here so this will be for forward slash then colon id and this will be activated on like example like this so you pass an id after the users this will be activated and to get that id you will use the at you will use the at param decorator and give it the name of the not the name give it this string like this and this will I will call it ID and of type number and I will just return uh, getting or I'll use the backstick getting this user okay so I think you are starting to get the point now if we want to create a user we will use the post decorator or the post HTTP request and this will look like this so add post and I'll get the functions under it called post and to get the body from the post request add body I'll call it user and for now it's a type any but we will add validation and give it a type at some point I'll just return an object so saved true and user 
so it's the same token so this is equivalent to this but we can make it sh uh, shorter I think yeah like this so and this maps to this route the same one as this but the only difference that this is a post request and it accepts a body uh, let now just make things fast I will copy paste the patch and the delete so patch this is to edit a user you send the ID for that user to patch it to edit it and this maps to this route also this one this to this route so you pass the ID and you get it like this this is the the body just update it and to delete just pass the ID to delete it uh, now let me I think I will import the, ref the did I import the reflect into that or that? I forgot. Yeah, okay, okay. Don't mind. Uh, so now let's export let's export this the same way we exported these. So I will create an index to TS and let me import users controller and then export it. So when you import it from any other file, you just reference this name of, of you just reference the name of this folder, which makes the imports uh, shorter. So to, there's a shortcut to import something and export it like this so export from uh, users controller this will import and export the users controller which is very nice and now go to app.ts let's import from controller the users controller and let's remove the core router we don't need it anymore we have found something better and now to create our core server we won't use the constructor function we will use we'll use something else from the routing controller it's called create core server but as you can see you have uh, express server as well if you want to use this for with express um, let me check how did I invoke this with a new now without a new so this is a factory function you can say I think so uh, pass it an object this this accepts an array of controllers so users controller by the way you can give it a path it will import all the controllers from a specific path I'm pretty sure I will do this at some point maybe in the next video or when we have multiple controllers uh, this is a good example why we uh, or a good use case to brief to add, add a suffix to the uh, controllers with dot controller so when we reference uh, sorry or we we will give it uh, a, a, like an option to import all of the all of the files that ends with dot controller to typescript as a controller which is very nice uh, and another reason why I like to add these suffix when I hit control P and type users there is a lot of files ca that could be named users a user's model, a user's controller, a user's DTO, a user's validation. There is a lot of things that could be named the same thing. With this suffix, uh, it's easy to spot uh, rather than the route. Oh, sorry, the path. Um, okay, so I, I believe that's it. So let's run npm run dev source app.ts. Hopefully, everything's fine. I recorded this two times. <laughs> okay, so it seems everything is fine. Now let me open or get Postman and test all of these routes. Okay, so let me open it here. And this makes this smaller so you can just see how the routes map. Maps. So first thing, we prefix all of these with the users. So if you went to forward slash users like this, so localhost 3000 forward slash users, and let's send a request. We can press Control Enter. So this retain all, as you can see this function, this string here. You can actually retain an object. Kua, uh, hi, like this. And now send again. We should see it's the restarting. So go high. 
Now, if we send a specific ID, so if, for example, I'm getting the user three, maybe to access his or her profile. So I'm getting you this user three, this route will be activated. Now, let's say I want to create a user. So the localhost 3004 slash users, the request type is post. Now, pass it some data. We will get to this eventually, but if I send that, I will get this response here. So they can save the true and the user, it's the user object you sent. Uh, same thing for patch, but we will pass the ID of that user and this is the body. So let's see the response. So the ID is 51, like th this one here. But of course in the real world you need to validate that this user exists. And this is the user update true. And also for delete, so let's delete a user 51, removing user 51. So this is it, like the basics of routing. Now we can start uh, maybe to use the entities with the routing to create a CRUD on each entity, which stands for create, read, update, and delete. Uh, and maybe after that we can create some validation, and maybe after it we can uh, query and maybe add authorization authentication. Maybe file upload as well. Thank you. Thank you.